Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on chi-squared distribution and critical values on a Casio FX CG50. Essentially this video shows you how to use the calculator rather than the chi-squared distribution tables that you might see in a textbook or a formula booklet or perhaps in your exam. Your calculator can produce those values for you. We have three different questions here, but they're all going to be using the same feature. So three different ways in which you might use this particular feature. Let's take a look at question one. The random variable X has a chi-squared distribution with nine degrees of freedom. Find X such that the probability of X being greater than X equals 0.05. Okay, so let's use the calculator to answer this question. We need to go to two statistics. In these particular examples, we're not going to be performing a test, although you may have done a chi-squared test and maybe want the critical value from that beforehand. So we don't actually go to test to reference the values from the distribution. What we need to do from the opening screen here is to press option, and then we want to press F6 twice. So go right on the menu twice. And then you can see here we've got stat F1, so press F1. And then F1 once more for dist distribution. And then we've got several distributions listed here. You can see in the middle we've got chi, so that's F3. And then finally we have our last selection here, and we're going to choose F3 inverse chi. So inverse chi-squared distribution. And you can see that's opened up a set of brackets, a set of parentheses. Now the way that you need to input this is you want to input your probability first and then a comma and then your degrees of freedom. So in this particular example we have a probability of 0.05 and then we have comma and degrees of freedom is 9 from the question and then close brackets and then press execute. Here you can see where we had the space uh, in list one. It's just uh, printed out our answer there, 16.918. And if we just take a look at the distribution tables, just to verify that, you can see that we get the same value here where we cross-reference 0.05 and 9 degrees of freedom. So that's the same value from the table. Let's have a look at uh, question two. So it's a slight variation of what we were asked for in question one, the random variable y has chi-squared distribution with 12 degrees of freedom, find y such that the probability that y is less than y equals 0.99. Now notice how in the probability there we have a random variable, capital Y, is less than little y, the value that we're trying to find from the table. When we think about the chi-squared distribution, we're thinking about the probability of exceeding those values. So if we were looking at it as a graph, it's basically to the right of the graph or the area to the right of the graph. So the probability of being above those values. So the inequality is in the wrong direction uh, as we've got it currently. But what we can do, we can think about um, the value that if we're trying to find something where the probability of it being less than is 0.99, well we know conversely that the probability of it being greater than that is 0.01 or 1%. If we know less than is 99%, we know greater than is 1%. So that's what we're going to put into the calculator. We're going to put 0.01 because the values will exceed that. So let's try again. We've got everything ready now, so we're straight on for inverse chi, F3, and then remember it's 0.01, comma, and then we've got the degrees of freedom, which is 12. Close brackets, execute, and in the next row there on list one, we've got our value 26.216, and we can cross-reference that uh, against the table again to show that we've got the same value. Question three then, we've got a little bit more detail. As part of an investigation into visits to a doctor's surgery, a four by three contingency table was created. 
A chi-squared test is to be carried out on the table with significance at the 2.5% level. We've got to write down the number of degrees of freedom and the critical region appropriate to this test. So let's start with the degrees of freedom. While well, we've got a four by three contingency table, the way that we would work that out is to subtract one from the two values before we multiply them together. So four minus one multiplied by three minus one. So that's three multiplied by two, six degrees of freedom for uh, this test. So now that we know that, let's find out the critical region from the calculator. And once more, it's inverse chi. We've got a 2.5% significance level. That is 0.025 as a decimal, comma. And then we've just worked out it's six degrees of freedom. Close the brackets, press execute. And here we have our result 14.449 quick cross-reference of that against the table. Just double checking again, we're getting the same values. And what we could do, say that we had a set of data uh, that we could put in our four by three contingency table, we would then use the calculator to do the test on that. And there's a previous video, if you're not sure how to do that, generate the chi-squared test st statistic. And then what you can do is you can test it against this value here, 14.449 if it exceeds that value then you can reject reject your null hypothesis for example that hasn't been defined here we were only interested in finding the degrees of freedom and the critical region for this just to show you how to use the inverse chi feature to be able to generate the numbers on the tables hopefully we're going to be using that in a future video looking at conducting a form of the chi squared test don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.